we would be tossed back to 1800 with no electricity, no computers for months and years in some locations. Hey, another week, another dollar. Hi, everybody. We got in this morning to this problem Ford and other car manufacturers are having. It isn't just these video game manufacturers like I talked about over the weekend on my show. And we also got into the security of our infrastructure. And all of that with Mr. Chris Ryan. So here we go. I mean, he is Craig. Peterson. Craig, how are you? Hey, good morning. Doing well. A couple things we want to get to with you today. I want to talk a bit about our grid and the security of our grid and how technology plays into that. Because to me, this has been one of my major concerns for a period of time, whether it's the breach, uh, breach water plant, which took place recently in Florida, had their computer system potentially exposed to a hazardous breach last week, whether it's our overall technology infrastructure, our lights, our emergency response, our electricity, all tied into the grid. What is your general sense about the safety of our infrastructure? Well, I'm not very happy with it, frankly, all the way across the board. You might know that I ran for the FBI, their InfraGuard program, which is for protecting our infrastructure. I ran webinars for about two years trying to help businesses, government organizations, NGOs, etc., understand the risks involved here. One of the real big risks we're seeing with some of this infrastructure, including in this case, this water plant, is that we have these computer controlled systems they are called SCADA systems and they are designed to allow you in the plant to open this valve close close that valve spin up the centrifuge which is how we destroyed a third of the Iranian centrifuges these types of systems security is an afterthought they've been in now for a few decades you look at this breached water plant down in Florida that you mentioned this was a simple mistake that should never have been made. What they did is they were using TeamViewer because everybody has to work from home now and they did not set everything up properly at all. Nobody really thought it through. There were no security experts because security expertise is a very narrow field that really a, a regular IT person is not qualified for. They set it up incorrectly. They shared a password. A third party got into the control computer, which had, again, this screen sharing software so you can work from home and increased the amount of lie going into the system by a, about a hundredfold, okay? Now, the good news is somebody else at home who was working at the plant, who was also attached to this computer, noticed the change before anyone got sick or died because of what happened at the water treatment plant. These sort of things are happening, not just in a, a smaller city, like what happened in this particular case, but our electrical grid. There's a, a lot of studies out that show that's why we lost power back in 2004 in the Northeast. It was a probe that was being conducted by most likely the Russians. It could have been the Chinese. Chris, bottom line, I'm not happy with the state of cybersecurity with our infrastructure. We could be in serious trouble. I, I don't know how far you should go with this, but we look at our electrical grid. We have these super transformers, if you will. There's only about a half a a dozen of them countrywide. We lose one of those. They have to be manufactured from scratch. Overseas, we can't even make them here anymore. If we had an electromagnetic pulse or even a massive solar storm like we have had before, we had the Carrington event about 150 years ago, we would be tossed back to 1800 with no electricity, no computers for months and years in some locations. Yeah, if you'd asked me five or ten years ago what our biggest security concerns were, one would be a pandemic. The second would be our overall grid and technology infrastructure. It was getting built up without the appropriate safeguards. We continue to pile dollars upon dollars upon dollars into traditional defense mechanisms. And that infrastructure, i.e. aircraft carriers, planes, missile defense, and those types of things, the proportional threat from 
cyber and from a pandemic has been significant for a period of time and really goes unchecked. We continue to focus dollar after dollar after dollar on a traditional military defense. It's really maddening. Yeah, I have to agree with that. It, it's very upsetting. This is not that hard to do, but our businesses aren't doing it. Of course, the government isn't doing it. It has to be done because if you get right down to it, it's simple enough to bring our economy to its knees if they're able to infiltrate. Look at what happened with Rep Stalwell out of California. Look at what happened with both of their senior senators over the years. In all three cases, they had Chinese plants that were either their body people working with them, uh, that's for you, Justin. maybe doing some other things with the body. Uh, now they had access to information. What would happen if somebody was involved with, let's say, Wall Street? Maybe they had access to some of these IT things inside of Wall Street. They got in just like with this water plant and they had access to a computer. They were able to take it over, bring down, just destroy Wall Street. Even if they only knock it out for a few days, it would be a huge impact on our economy. One more thing before we let you go. The Biden administration has pledged to take immediate action to address a global shortage of semiconductors that has forced the closure of several U.S. car plants. This is due to a global chip shortage. They have said they're going to take immediate action, but they have made unclear as to what exactly that action is, other than engaging in conversation about what to, to do in regards to the shortage of chips as a result of the amount of demand that there has been for the for these chips. We are now behind in being able to address it and be able to provide the chips for these car makers. What's your take on that and how does it get solved? It goes back to China. It's being reported that as a result of the U.S. sanctions on China, that we are unable to get the chips. That kind of also <laughs> broke the question of, do we want to have Chinese chips <laughs> in all of our vehicles and electronics, et cetera. That's a big deal. We've got all of the major manufacturers, Ford cutting production at Chicago's facility from three shifts down to one because they can't get the chips. They're, of course, blaming it on the Trump administration. Makes sense, right? It's a predecessor's fault. Always is. Doesn't matter who you are. In reality, what happened here is there was a complete miscomputation of our need for chips based on the lockdown worldwide. So they stopped making them. There are, of course, companies out of China that are no longer able to provide chips. To answer your last question there, Chris, I'm really concerned about these Chinese chips. We had chips delivered to us for our fighters, for our jet fighters. And we were able to get into those, have a closer look at the very last minute. We found the Chinese had modified those chips that they had sold to us. They looked on the outside like they were the right chip. They ran like they were the right chip, but they had certain vulnerabilities built into them by the Chinese. Our jet fighters, they're doing this all of the time. Uh, Super micro huge, huge story here about a year and a half ago, where one of the major manufacturers of server components found a little chip about the size of a grain of rice hidden on the motherboard. Apparently, it was calling home to China to get instructions, and it was installed in thousands of places, including Google, including Apple, many, many regular businesses. We can't trust it. We need to get more manufacturing here in the U.S. I have to say the highest end manufacturing of chips, Chris, is done here in the U.S. and not in China. We've got a bit of a leg up here going forward. Well, Craig, as always, appreciate you joining us here on New Hampshire today. We encourage folks to check out Craig Peterson's uh, Tech Talk, which is on Saturdays from 1130 to noon. Also airs on Sundays as well from 12:30 to 1. Craig, appreciate your time. Take care. Who knew that putting together uh, one of these courses would be as much work as it's turned out to be? Oh my gosh! But we want it to be right. We want it to uh, just work for you guys. So we've got 22 little modules as part of this improving Windows security course. They are now all edited already. We are putting it up on a new site that has some learning management software on it. 
so it makes it easier for you guys and over time we're going to be continuing to release trainings kind of long tail ones this one's improving windows security which covers a lot of topics but do things on vpns and other stuff we'll see how this all goes man is this take taking just so much longer than i had hoped Initially, I'd hoped it would be out in January, and now we're looking to uh, hopefully have it out by the beginning of March. Oh, my gosh. Once we've got it set up the first time, you know how that goes. It's going to be easier for future time. So all of you guys who asked to be notified about when the Improving Windows Security course is coming out, keep your ears to the ground because it is coming. I haven't given up, and uh, I think it's really quite a good little course. All right, take care, everybody. Be back tomorrow.